So this is the uh, report on the uh, 2019 CB500X at 9,300 miles. Uh, I've been riding for 57 years and I've had small bikes, big bikes, fast bikes, slow bikes. I usually have two, sometimes three bikes at a time. I've actually been riding this as my only bike for a while and it's been surprisingly satisfying. It's kind of like the Swiss Army of bikes. The uh, other tests that I've seen before before I bought this and since I bought it, leave out a lot of little pertinent details. So I'm not going to focus on specifications, I'm just going to talk about all the little things that I think other tests have kind of missed. Um, first of all, the uh, seat. I think not a lot of attention is paid to seats. I've had Corbin seats and custom seats and uh, this is definitely one of the better stock seats. If I were taking a long trip, I might be tempted to go to something a little more comfortable. but my rides are mostly in the 50 to 100 mile range, occasionally 150 on twisty roads and uh, with some stops. So um, this works great, although I've had plenty of bikes that were torture after 30 minutes. The other thing I was going to mention is the uh, ABS. This is the ABS model and uh, people always complain about not being able to shut off the ABS, uh, ABS on uh, adventure bikes. And uh, I think this is kind of misguided. Uh, 25 years ago, I had a bad experience with a BMW, uh, early BMW GS with ABS and uh, in Colorado coming down a steep hill. The rear brake uh, basically was useless, just clicking away and not slowing the bike down. And uh, that, I was able to shut the brakes off when I got ABS off when I got stopped. But that kind of left a bad taste in my mouth about ABS. But to be honest with you, this bike and my last bike with ABS worked so incredibly great. I've tried it on wet roads, I've tested it on dirt roads, <laughs> I won't tell you how. <laughs> I don't want to create any, any problems for anybody, but I tested it and felt very secure that I don't have a problem using the bike on dirt roads with ABS. Um, of course, if you think you're Joe Motocross and you want to back the bike into the corner by using the rear brakes to swing the back end out, uh, yeah, you won't be able to do that, but I think kind of you pr probably have the wrong bike. Uh, another thing that a lot of testers kind of miss are the gauges. Um, so, it's not very sunny today, but when it's sunny, uh, it, it, the gauges watch out pretty pretty good. The only thing I would say is, is that the uh, Speedo and the and the gear position are large enough that you always see those. Frankly, everything else is so small you probably shouldn't be looking at it uh, with, with while you're moving. The, the, that is actually the temperature gauge, which is so small it's kind of almost useless. And it's got good information, but not in a way that's easily readable. Uh, the gas gauge is pretty readable, and uh, the tachometer which is over on this side. I'll turn it on and off again so you can get a better look at it. There it is on that side there. That's not very readable when you're, when you're moving. However, the good news is there's a light that comes on over here that you can set uh, for any RPM and I set it for a little below red line. So when I see that light, I know it's time to... Uh... Jeff, let me show it to you here now. It's gonna come on for just a second there. I don't know if you saw that there, but um, I wish it were better visibility, but it's it's fine in the big scheme of things. The other thing is people don't talk about is switch gear. The switch gear on here is very nice for an inexpensive bike. Very positive, very positive feel to it, to all the switches. Nice positive click. And um, the only thing I would say is is the the, the horn. It's a little awkward to get to. You're riding, you kind of have to really kind of bend your thumb over and really, I kind of ex expect horn buttons to be a little more easily, uh, easily accessed. Uh, loud horns save lives. I'm a big believer in horns, so. Uh, the other thing nobody seems to talk about is the grips are absolutely rock hard. Uh, I probably will get around to changing them to gel grips. And then the bar end weights are very, small and very light compared to most bikes I've had lately, which I think contributes to the uh, common 
criticism that the bike vibrates a lot at freeway speeds. Yeah, it, it does vibrate, and there's no doubt about it. I think changing to heavier bar end weights and um, gel grips would probably at least help, because most of the vibration I feel is in the bars. I do feel some in the tank and the uh, pegs. I've heard people talk about gearing it up, and I've got to say I, I don't believe in that. Six gear is very usable. It has good acceleration, and uh, I think you're going to kill the acceleration. And all the gears are actually very nicely well spaced. Fourth gear is a wonderful little back, twisty back road gear. You can almost leave it in fourth if you're not at warp speed on back roads and just kind of open and shut the throttle anywhere from, in theory, 30 to 90, but in reality, it's nice and nice and juicy between 40 and 60. Um, you probably have noticed, if you have one of these, that I got the uh, aftermarket uh, foot for the uh, stand. The stand is kind of short, with a kind of a small foot, and so uh, I'm not a big believer in lots of accessories, but I think that that actually is uh, pretty neat. Um, the little bag I'm using is Nelson Rig, very nice. Comes in different sizes. It's relatively small, you can expand it a little bit, but kind of carries everything you kind of really need. And uh, the other thing that people don't talk about a lot is suspension. The, uh, the forks are adjustable. And when I got the bike, I had to uh, crank down the, the preload a couple notches. It was kind of a little on the soft side. And um, the back shock, shock is a little more problematic because I'm 200 pounds and I really think it's kind of designed for uh, somebody more like in the 150 pound range. You notice it's kind of buried back in there. It's kind of hard to get to to adjust the uh, preload. I did get in there and adjust the preload to the next to the stiffest position, which helps, but it definitely, on certain road surfaces, the back end kind of pogos around a little more than I like. And um, I think I've had a lot of Olin's shocks. I might actually go to uh, Olin's at some point. Although I think probably the big culprit it could be just the spring because there's uh, a lot of springs that are on these motorcycles, especially in this price range, seem to be aimed at smaller riders. Another thing that I haven't heard too many people talk about is how the bike looks. Uh, I've had some people on really exotic <laughs> Italian bikes uh, comment about how nice it looks. And I'm not a big fan of the way any adventure bike looks, but I think to some extent you're uh, starting with a design on an adventure bike that lends to it being awkward and industrial, but I think they did a good job, especially for the price. I mean, that, that, that's that's kind of amazing. I've had bikes a lot more expensive that I really wasn't as happy with uh, in, in any way. So I think, I think it's just a great value. Oh, the other thing too is gas mileage. I've heard people say 80 miles to a gallon, and I'm going to I'm going to call I don't believe that. <laughs> I've never gotten past 70, and uh, 60 is not uncommon. I think if you uh, are really getting 80, you probably are not enjoying the bike. <laughs> it definitely got a little better as it got some miles on it, by the way. Somewhere around five or 6,000 miles, the mileage went up a little bit, and um, it's uh, the more pertinent is the four and a half gallon tank. I don't know if you can actually get all four and a half gallons in, but I've got to say <laughs> the range is pretty phenomenal. I mean, I'm typically f filling up anywhere between 200 and 240, and that's pretty conservative. There's probably lots of gas still in there. I just don't, I get nervous when it gets down to the bottom. There is a little buffeting with the windshield, and I'm six foot tall. I'm, I notice when I duck down a little bit that that uh, helps so somebody in the 5.9, 5.10 range might might do better. Since I'm not taking trips, I'm not that concerned about it. If I were taking a trip, I might look at doing some kind of a different windshield. And um, yeah, I'll, the, 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 another thing is I've had a lot of probably a dozen European bikes and uh, you know nobody talks about the reliability factor. I just don't expect to ever have anything go wrong with this bike and so far nothing has which is more than I can say for a lot of bikes I've had. And so, you know, that's something that should be factored into any uh, purchase. But anyway, that's kind of my take on the bike, and um, I hope I filled in some gaps that the other tests didn't talk about. Anyway, this is, uh, this is Ron signing off.